Well, this webinar is about the growing Iranian threat to regional and Western security. Now you might wonder, a growing threat? This was not supposed to happen. Iran was under the JCPOA, the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, a document that was concluded by the P5 plus one on July 14th, 2015. It should have reduced the scale of the Iranian threat to the Middle East and beyond. Instead, it did just the opposite. When I started my work on Middle Eastern security, I was Israel's ambassador to the United Nations. And we focused in 1991 on weapons of mass destruction, not of Iran, but of Saddam Hussein's Iraq. To recall, the elimination of Iraqi WMD was based on UN Security Council Resolution 687, which also served as the basis of the ceasefire in the first Gulf War. That resolution prohibited Iraq from possessing biological, chemical, and nuclear weapons. It also banned all missiles with a range greater than 150 kilometers. A new UN organization called UNSCOM inspected suspected sites for banned Iraqi missiles. Most of the tricks that Iran would use years later were already tried out by Iraq. For that reason, it was striking to me that when the P5 plus one completed the JCPOA in 2015, there was no stipulation limiting Iran's possession or deployment of missiles of any range. It was left out of the accord. It was one of several glaring faults in the negotiating record of the Iran deal, like its weak inspection system that only opened up declared Iranian sites to regular inspections. The Western powers uncovered Iranian nuclear infrastructure in undeclared sites like Natanz, Isfahan, and Fordu. Then there were the sunset clauses that allow key provisions to expire. It struck me that the JCPOA was like a carton of milk that had an expiration date. It wasn't intended to last forever. These flaws all interacted with each other. So after 10 years, let's say, when the limitations on uranium enrichment are removed and Iran can manufacture as much weapons grade uranium, as it wants, it will have already built up a huge stock of long range ballistic missiles. If you put together the enriched uranium and the missiles, you get a new Soviet Union, a mini superpower run by radical ayatollahs and not by godless communists. Last, there is the issue of the removal of sanctions on the Iranian economy and its influence on what we call Iran's malign activities. A study this year by the Tony Blair Institute for Global Change demonstrated convincingly that the assumption that the conclusion of the JCPOA would moderate Iran's malign activities was completely wrong. The number of Iranian-backed militias in the Middle East actually surged after 2015 and entered new theaters like Africa, Morocco, and the Western Sahara. Since the Islamic Revolution, Iran has viewed large parts of the Arab world as its rightful patrimony. It sees Bahrain as Iranian sovereign territory. It's impossible to imagine Iran withdrawing from the three islands near the Strait of Hormuz that belong to the United Arab Emirates. I cannot imagine Tehran conceding the Shia populated sections of Iraq. The same is beginning to happen in Syria. In short, the removal of sanctions 
while Iran is still pursuing the export of the Islamic revolution and voicing these territorial claims, will inevitably leave the Middle East with a new spike in terror and insurgency operations from Syria in the north to Yemen in the south, as well as a new wave of Iranian expansionism well beyond.